Welcome to SVG Stroke Tricks Bowl on a Wire. In today's video, we're going to start out in Boxy with this very basic artwork. We'll then bring it to life with GSAP. And we're going to start out with this version, which I call Beginner Mode, where I'll show you how the basic animation synchronize the ball with the wire bending. However, we're then going to take it into Pro Mode and add some really nice easing so that you really get the feel of this sort of dropping, hitting some resistance with the wire, and then you have the wire sort of snap on the way back up, all right? Now, you may not think you'll need a bouncing ball on a wire animation for your website, but to get the timing and easing just right, we'll be tapping into some advanced features of GSAP that are incredibly helpful. I promise, you won't be disappointed. So let's take a look at our artwork in Boxy SVG. Oh hey, and real quick, if you could just take one second and like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would be a big help. Thank you so much. I have this file set up with a 100 by 100 pixel grid, and I love working with nice round numbers. Our ball here is starting out at a Y of 24, okay? But the bottom of it is sitting right at this 100 pixel line, okay? It might be hard to see with this stroke on, so very quickly I'm just going to go to the stroke panel, turn the stroke off, and you can see the bottom is right at that 100 pixel position. And what we need to do with this ball is bring it down 200 pixels so that it's sitting right where this red dot is, okay? So I'm just gonna do a quick undo to put the stroke back on. And in my geometry panel, I'm gonna take the existing Y and set it over to 224. And you'll see that that puts it exactly where I want it to be. So just remember the ball needs to travel 200 pixels. Now for this line that I have right here or my wire, let me use the edit tool so that I can select this middle point here. What I'm going to do with this middle point is just grab it and drag it down to this X200 Y300 point and this is going to be now the ending state of both the ball and the wire down at the bottom. Pretty much all I need from here is the path attribute of the wire in this position. So I've selected it here, and I'm just going to Command C to copy it to my clipboard, and we'll hold on to it for just a moment. And as far as our animation goes, let me just go ahead and undo a little bit. We're gonna take our ball here, let me use the uh, transform tool, and we're gonna move it this 200 pixels in one second linearly. So that means that exactly half a second into the animation, it's going to be touching our line perfectly. And then for the next half a second, the ball will continue to linearly move down and our friend here, the line, is going to have its middle point move that last 100 pixels for the last half a second and it's gonna line up perfectly. So let's head on over to CodePen and take a look at the code. So here we are with our SVG in CodePen, and we got a pretty clean SVG here. We have our ellipse with a class of ball, and we have our path with a class of wire. You'll notice that there are no inline styles on these elements, because in my CSS, I just created these rules for them, okay? Ball and wire have their own fills, but they share the same stroke styles. Now over in the JavaScript, I have some standard boilerplate code here. We're gonna create a timeline with defaults of an ease none. And here I have that ball tween where we're just moving to that 200 pixels for the Y and a duration of one, which I told you about previously. So here we're gonna see this very exciting animation, all right? The ball just drops 200 pixels over the course of one second with no easing. Now what we wanna do is go to the halfway point where as soon as the ball hits the wire, the wire is going to start to bend. So to do that, I'm gonna add a two tween. I'm gonna target the wire, and then we're going to use the attribute plugin to target the D attribute. And now I'm gonna just paste in that string that I had copied before. And now you will see that the animation of the wire happens after the ball gets to the bottom, okay? And of course, that's because tweens in a timeline always play one after the other. Well, what I'm going to do is add a position parameter here of 0.5, and now that should have things aligned perfectly. Ta-da! And I'm just gonna hop over to GS Dev Tools here so you can see 
that the instant that the ball touches the wire, it's going to start to bend, and they're both gonna finish at the same time. So here, the second tween is starting at a time of 0.5 seconds, which is halfway through the first tween's duration. Now, GSAP tweens have a default duration of 0.5, which is why the second tween here did not need to have a duration explicitly set. So if we watch this animation a few times, you know, yeah, it looks okay, but the fact that it's a linear ease kind of makes it look a bit lifeless, or you could say robotic, all right? So what we want to do is have it so that the ball maybe starts dropping slowly, then hits the wire, and then, you know, they both come down and the wire offers some tension, which would further slow it down, okay? So let's take a journey through perfecting the easing. So one thing you might try is saying, hey, you know what, maybe the ball tween, maybe I'll just give it an ease of, you know, power one dot out. And that's what you get. You'll see that it totally messes up the synchronization of those two tweens because the first ball there isn't running at a linear rate. Now you could also say, oh, well, what if we applied the same ease to both of them and we made it the default of something like power one dot out? Well, again, it's not going to work, all right? Just the way easing is, we have different durations with different start times and it's not going to be lined up. Lastly, you know, we could do something ridiculous like a bounce and that's going to be all out of whack too, okay? So, the solution is to start with a timeline with no easing, but then what we're going to do is tween the playback of the timeline with an ease applied. And we're going to use GSAP's tween2 method to do that, which we've covered in depth in GSAP3 Beyond the Basics. But don't worry, I'll get you up to speed. Tween2 creates a tween that animates the position of a timeline's playhead with any duration and ease that we specify. It's literally as if I had a tween that grabbed the GS Dev Tools playhead and said, drag it really slow and bounce at the end like this. All right, we can do that programmatically. And the code for that looks like this. I'm going to say, hey, TL, I'm gonna call your tween2 method, and we're gonna tween2 to a time of one and use an ease of bounce. And look what happens. Our whole entire animation has this bounce on it. I can also put a duration on there and set it to four. And now the playback is being tween very, very slowly. So hopefully that helps you understand how this all works. Um, we really don't want this bounce or this long duration here. So what I'm gonna do is change the ease over to a power two dot in out, which is gonna have it start slow, get faster, then slow down. The duration's gonna be one, and I'm also gonna do a repeat of, let's say, 12, and we'll do a yo-yo of true. And now you'll see we get this really nice up and down animation where it's just sort of slowing down at the bottom, shooting up, and then slowing down at the top again, all right? Much more lifelike than what we had before. And although I really love this, I wanna take it one step further. I'm not so happy with how this line just sort of snaps back into place. I wanna give it just a little bit of an extra wiggle. So let me show you what we're gonna do. All right, so now with this window expanded a bit, let me just show you that when the ball drops down and the wire snaps to flat here, I want it to just bounce up a little bit, meaning the wire. Now to do that, I need a new wire tween that's gonna synchronize or line up with this tween two that I have. And the best way to do that is to put this tween two and my new wire animation in a new timeline. So I've created this master timeline here. And what I wanna do is take this entire animation that I've already created and add it to master. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna select this tween, I'm gonna cut it out, and I'm gonna say master.add, and inside of there I'm going to add that tween two, and then I'm gonna tell GS Dev Tools that its animation should be master. We'll give that a run, and now I have the ball bouncing up and down, same old thing, but now we have this master timeline that it's in, and GS is controlling master. 
Now for what I'm doing here, I no longer need, let me pause, 12 repeats. I just need one repeat. And what I wanna do is just pause you here. And I'm just gonna use GS Dev Tools here to scrub forward and the ball drops for one second, okay? So right when I get to one second, where are you all the way down here? We're gonna be totally at the bottom. Now we're starting our yo-yo of that tween two going back to the top, okay? I'm gonna pull forward just a bit. And then when I get to exactly 1.5 seconds, that's when the line becomes completely flat, all right? And that's where I need to add my new wire bounce animation. So now to save me some typing, I'm literally going to just take this tween that I have up here that animates the D attribute of the wire. I'm going to copy it out and I'm going to add it to the master timeline, but I'm not going to use this D attribute here. I'm going to get rid of it and I'm going to insert this tween at a time of 1.5. So let's head on over to Boxy and get the path data that I need. All right, let me just go ahead, select this point here on my wire and I'm just gonna pull it up to about there, all right? I just want a very subtle arc or overshoot of that wire. I'll go into the path. I'm gonna copy out all the string inside that D attribute, Command C. We'll head back to CodePen. I'm just going to paste it in. And I'm also gonna give this a duration of 0.1. I'm gonna make it very quick. And now, aha, it went up, all right? Not too bad. It would be nice if it went back down though, but we're getting somewhere. All we have to do now is add a repeat one and a yo-yo true. Ah, how is that? We can just keep playing, burp, burp. Very nice. So here we have something that on the surface looks very simple, but to really get the finesse and beauty that we want, we gotta tap into some of these advanced GSAP features. And again, I cover all this stuff like tween two, nesting, in GSAP 3 Beyond the Basics and my B-Sides course. So the information's there for you, uh, and hopefully this little example helps open your eyes to the true potential you have with GSAP when you understand these advanced features. So go forth and animate wisely. See you in the next lesson. All right, that's a wrap, folks. I really hope you learned something cool that you can add to your own projects. Again, it really helps me if you take the time to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.